My name is Morris Jetty. I'm the CTO of SCEDMD, and I've been working on Slurm since its inception in 2002. I wrote about half the code, and uh, I'll be going over the basics here of, of, of what it does and how it works. So the, the goals of this are to provide you with the basics of Slurm's architecture, its daemons and commands, and you'll learn how to use a basic set of commands, how to build, configure, and install Slurm with a simple configuration, and, and uh, you'll get a DVD with the, with the files, uh, and I'll walk you through exactly how to do that. And this is really just an introduction, but it'll provide you with a good start. I'll, so uh, the agenda is to uh, talk about the role of a resource manager and a job scheduler, and Slurm is really both. Uh, to review Slurm's design and architecture, uh, the commands it has, and how to build and configure and install it. And we'll walk through a demonstration. So uh, you can think of a resource manager as the glue for a parallel computer to execute your parallel jobs. So ideally it should make the parallel computer almost as easy to use as a PC. On a PC, to execute a program, you would just give it the program name, Maybe some arguments on on a cluster running Slurm, it would look about the same, except you would have to tell how many copies of it to run. And MPI is typically used to manage the communications within the parallel program. Okay. So the the resource manager is responsible for allocating resources within the, the cluster, and uh, that would include things like uh, a node, which is typically represented by a unique IP address. Uh, it has to be aware of of the sockets, the cores, and hyperthreads, and that knowledge lets you optimize your task layout to. Uh, optimize your application performance. You've got to worry about the memory you've got uh, to allocate and potentially share on the node. You've got to worry about your, uh, your uh, interconnect, your switch, and uh, other resources as well like uh, graphics units, uh, GPUs, um, licenses or something that you might have to worry about on your cluster. And the resource manager just uh, launches and otherwise manages your your jobs. I broke out a description of a job scheduler here and and that's mostly because uh, some uh, in some instances there's a separate product for job scheduling and uh, resource management so if you've got more work than resources then the job scheduler gets in the picture in terms of managing the queue of work and typically it has complex algorithms for scheduling that, that work to take into consideration your network topology, fair share scheduling, uh, advanced reservations, job preemption, and uh, gang scheduling, which is time slicing of parallel jobs. Uh, it typically supports uh, resource limits by user queue group and that type of thing. So the next uh, section of this I'm going to talk about Slurm's architecture and, uh, and the design of, of the software. So Slurm stands for uh, Simple Linux Utility for Resource Management and the development started in 2002 as in fact a simple resource manager for uh, Linux clusters and it's evolved into a very capable job scheduler through the use of opt optional plugins. Today it's about half a million lines of C code so it's not exactly simple anymore. Uh, it supports quite a few uh, different operating systems and it is used uh, on, on many of the uh, world's largest computers today. So uh, the design goals are, are to make it something small and simple, uh, or at least that was the original design. And it depends upon your configuration. If, if you configure Slurm with a minimal set of plugins, then it is very small. Intel, in fact, has, has used it to do resource management for their cluster on a chip design. But it's highly scalable too. So for the Blue Jean Q on, uh, at Livermore with 1.6 million cores, it runs with no problem. And we've tested on machines far larger than that through emulation. Slurm's open source, it's available under the uh, 
GPL v2 license and there's an active worldwide development community there are contributions from somewhere around a hundred different people we try to make a system administrator friendly so if you're uh, if you're running it on a very large cluster it's really almost as easy to administer as a small cluster it's uh, designed to be secure and fault tolerant so there's no single point of failure and also uh, portable in terms of portability there are no modifications required to the uh, operating system it's all written in the C language it uses autoconf uh, and and what that does is it uh, it determines what files are available what libraries are available where everything is and then build slurm so that it will run on that environment and if uh, if somebody came up with any new operating system that was Unix light it would probably run on on that operating system with minimal effort. Slurm is designed so it provides a, a skeleton of, of functionality with a, a general purpose plug-in me mechanism and that lets the system administrator customize the installation using a building block type approach depending on which plugins they use. And there are various system specific plugins available and more under development. So for example there's a, uh, a BlueGene plugin and a plugin specifically for Cray systems. The plugins are dynamically linked objects that are loaded at runtime depending on your configuration and our user options. Uh, right now there are 70 plugins of 17 different varieties. So some of those plugins available today are uh, to control where you store accounting information, whether you store it in a MySQL uh, database or Postgres or a text file, what type of network topology you've got, uh, what flavor of MPI you have, what you use for checkpointing, uh, what you use for authentication, and so forth. Some people have developed their own plugins for Slurm, and the uh, interfaces for all of the uh, plugins are, are well documented. Uh, an example of something that uh, somebody did was they developed a scheduler plugin to take advantage of the availability of green energy sources. Uh, most plugins have several examples available so that if uh, uh, you, you wanted to uh, uh, adapt one for your users, make mi minor changes or, uh, or merge capabilities of different ones, you'd have, you've had several examples to look at. And some of the plugins have Lua script interfaces available and that, uh, that lets you uh, interface to the system without getting into the C code or C data structures. Here, here's an example of one plugin. Whenever anybody submits a job to Slurm, there's a uh, plugin called the Job Submit plugin, which is called. And it just has two functions. There's one that's called on a job submit and another one that's called when a job is modified, say to change its time limits. And these can be used to set default values or enforce limits using some functionality that's outside of, of the Slurm code proper. For example, uh, somebody might have a number of uh, queues available for their jobs. And this plugin could be used to determine which queues the job could be submitted to and route the job to whichever queue would be best suited for the job in terms of its time limits or job size or user ID or whatever.